Fuji. Another early rise, big day. After the Tarrant Open, we're going to Lake Ash. How do you feel, man? Focus on the road right now. <laughs> Focus on the road. So we've rented out a car. First time driving in Tokyo. The city was a little bit hectic, but... Even at half past five in the morning. Truly a city that never sleeps. Keep watching. Just a heads up guys, it is literally like the stairway out of heaven to get to this pagoda. So many damn stairs. So as you can see behind me, we have made it to the Torito Pagoda. It's part of the Arakura Sengen Shrine, um, which is just at the base of Mount Fuji. It's about 400 steps to get up to the top, and there's also a massive shrine down the bottom for you to go have a look at as well. It was originally built in the late 1950s um, to commemorate, no, commemorate 960 um, citizens of the region who died anywhere from sort of 1860 onwards, so World War II, one south pacific um anything else in between there as well so it's um dedicated from the mayor um, of the town um to the people who sacrificed their lives but as you can see it is stunningly beautiful as well and a good uh, memory to them homage to them should i say too bad about the mountain yes uh getting up at five to get here to uh check this bad boy out and unfortunately a bit of cloud cover today but you know what guys that's just life so we still made it, it's still a beautiful pagoda regardless, so to get off the bucket list, hey? Charlie's right guys, even though Mount Fuji was hidden, the views up there were still pretty spectacular, and the vibe was definitely tranquil and serene. One of the perks of getting up early and exploring these locations is that you pretty much get the whole place to yourself, which definitely makes the whole experience that little bit extra special. So this place is free to get in, um, it's probably best to come early in the morning, hopefully, fingers crossed, you'll get a clear sky so you get Mount Fuji in the background as well. I can imagine this being a lot busier over summertime than all winter, there was a couple other people who were there but they were coming and going, getting their picture and leaving, they weren't hanging around. So. Yeah, I think everyone's got the same idea, pretty much trying to get there for that sunrise shot. It is a classic staple on Instagram and you know, all those travel magazines and stuff like that. But it's one of those things you just got to tick off your bucket list while you're traveling. And now we're just going to take the slow back down the set of the stairs. Cause yep, we've done, our, <laughs> we've done our 30 minutes of cardio for the day. <laughs> I'd rather just do 400 steps, not 800 steps. Yep. <laughs> about an hour from the tree to a pagoda. I'm very, very glad that we didn't hang around because there was no way we were seeing Mount Fuji on its glory today. Um, but we're currently at the Hakone Shrine, which is about an hour drive all through like, the mountains and stuff, which are pretty beautiful. So we're just having a wander around now and then we'll head down to Hakone Lake as well for a little peek. Summertime it's filled with locals having fun by the lake, as you do. to Lake Ashinoko before, but you know what? It's one of those places you would always come back to. It's a cultural rich environment, the views are stunning, and I'm always stoked with the photos I get while I'm there. 
If you guys do want to check it out but don't necessarily want the hassle of driving out there yourself, don't stress because there's quite a few options to take you out there for the day. There's companies like JTB which will let you tailor make what you want from them from the day. You can have with or without lunch, with bullet train, without bullet train, with rope bay, without rope bay. If you're more on the independent side of things, you can quite easily catch a train out there. Again, this is Japan. Their rail system is top notch. To be honest, it's probably going to be the cheapest option too. Hopefully when you guys get there, you get awesome weather, as the views are just next level when the sun is out. We weren't so lucky this time around. So the weather has turned to absolute shit, and we've had to cut our visit to the lake a little short, but we're looking at the positives. We're in a warm car. We're out of this snowy rain thing that seems to be happening at the moment. While I continue to kid myself, I figure this is a good time to hand it over to Charlotte to explain a bit more about car rental while travelling overseas. That's a massive hotel. I basically just picked the smallest one we could get our hands on. Um, there's an online company called Drive Away Holidays which will compare not every single company in every single city but give you a good overview. So I wanted to look at a car that we could pick up at any time so we weren't restricted and that we could drop back at any time as well. Um, really huge thing to know about car hire guys is having a valid credit card, having a valid license for that country, so if you need to get your international license, you need to go ahead and do it. Um, brushing up in your road before you jump in the car just so you can get caught out by little things. Um, when we did pick up the car, one useful thing that they did um, offer us, which I wasn't aware of, it's called a ETC card, uh, which is basically to get through all the road tolls while you're driving. You don't have to stop and pay cash at everyone. If they're all over the world, we never got used to them where we're from, but you know, it makes it much easier when you're driving just to be able to slow down, hear the bleep, boom gate open and drive straight through. Only costs us 300 yen and then they'll just charge my card when I take the car back today. One other thing about car hire as well is that your petrol, so you can often in bigger cities that are a bit more spread out than what Tokyo is, you can choose to either prepay to have your tank filled up and you can bring it back empty or you can go fill it up yourself and take it back. Obviously dollar value depending on what's going to be cheaper uh, but for Tokyo however because it's so dense and compact they want you to go fill it up and bring it back to them full. So the helpful gentleman at the counter gave us the coordinates for the nearest one to type into our GPS so we're on our way there now and then after that we can go ahead and take it back. Driving around Tokyo can definitely be a daunting experience, but guys, if you don't try this, you are really missing out. Yeah, we're heading to Tokyo Sky Slightly worried going full Tokyo drift on these go karts. Yeah. I feel better now about hiring a car after driving this. <laughs> Whoever thought of dressing up as your favourite fictional character and taking people on a tour around your city in go karts was a freaking genius. in doing something like this, make sure to check out the link in the description below.
the end of this video, scroll down, check it out. That was sick! Okay, so, so we just got back into our my stay and guess what just arrived? Pretty sure it's my wallet. Oh! Come to Papa! And it's even got all my yen in there. <laughs> and it cost me half of what they said it was going to as well. God, I love Japan.